Hello. Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. It's Thursday. It's time to do some drawing. And I hope you're ready to do it. Um, today is, well, here I am in Phoenix where, what is the temperature right now? It's 97. But I think it's going up to 114, maybe 115, something like that. It's kind of insane for the middle of June, but so it is. Anyway, TD is talking about the weather, but the weather is a major factor here in our lives because you can't kind of go out and do stuff. So I am planning to get the hell out of here. Well, that's not really the reason, but it has certainly is a side benefit that I'm going to be uh, traveling to the East Coast, to New York City for about a week. I'm leaving my wife and my dog here to roast. And I'm going to go to New York where we are filming for the first time in uh, however long it's been. We're actually getting to film some artists. So I'm going to be working with a few artists to make some workshops that are going to be coming out later this year. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing New York again, seeing what it's like. It's going to be really nice. And so today, one of the things I'm going to talk about is just kind of thinking about traveling again and, and how that um, affects our drawing, how, you know, what, what, what we need to take with us when we travel, how to think about drawing when you are visiting a new place, travel journaling. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I'm gonna, I, so anyway, so I'm going to be doing a little preparatory drawing today. So you're welcome to join me doing that. You can draw with me, draw what I'm going to be drawing, or you could be preparing for a trip you might be taking, or you might not be taking, and you'd love to be taking, and you're staycationing, or you're just stuck in the house, or you're stuck in your town, wherever it is, uh, or maybe you want to travel to where you live. That's another option, is to be a tourist in your own town. I remember um, doing that a long time ago when my son was little, and we pretended that we were tourists in New York City when we lived there. And we went to all the tourist sites, and we kept illustrated journals about uh, what that was like, and it was pretty fun. So, so you, can, you can be a traveler in your own town and see it like travelers do. Hi to everybody who's here. Um, first of all, how great was the nature journaling that we did last week and all the examples that we showed at the beginning that was pretty exciting um it's i love nature journaling we're going to be doing more of it in in the near future um and i just wanted to talk about well different kinds of journaling i don't know if you've seen but i did um i've been doing this series of videos on youtube where you might be watching this on youtube in which case maybe later on you want to go and check out um, these new videos that I've been making, essays really, about sketchbook keeping. Uh, if you miss them, it's probably because you're not subscribed to our channel, which is, uh, you know, something you should do. Just subscribe, just click, and then you'll be notified when I put up a new essay. I'm putting up, I'm going to put up another one later today, in fact. I'm putting up, I put one up yesterday. I'm, at, I'm not at a frenzy pace or anything. I just... I'm liking the way that I'm making these essays. Other people seem to be doing that, liking it too, so I'm putting them out there. So anyway, thank you all. Um, yes, Rose seems to like them too. Why is that not visible? That's weird. Um, let me just fix that. And um, yes, yeah, sorry. So yes. There we go. Um, yes, so who else? Yes. As it says here, tap in the lower right-hand corner of the video screen. You'll just see this little sketchbook school icon. Click on it, and you'll be subscribed. And uh, yes, so good. So thank you all for liking them, and uh, please keep watching them and subscribing. As Chris says, all the cool kids are subscribed. And who's cooler than Chris Seidel? Hard to say. Okay, so um, what else do I want to talk to you about before we dig into this? So I want you to get your stuff together, get your pens, your paper, your stuff. We'll be, we'll be starting in a moment. But I did want to tell you about a new workshop. We just did this workshop last weekend, or I did my first workshop. It was really fun. I think people really liked it. It was called Dip Into Dip Pens. If you missed it, 
oh well. But if you enjoyed it, um, I hope you're continuing to work with your dip pens. But I also want to tell you about the next workshop we're doing, which is really special because it's it's a deep dive. Here's here's a little description of it. Hey, David Pyle here. We're gonna head out into the great out of doors and paint. I'm gonna take you on a walk and show you different options for the kinds of image or landscape that you might wanna work from. And then we're gonna to work together to build a painting. We're gonna talk about composition. We're gonna talk about my tools and the toolkit that I've developed over the last 40 years and why I think it's worked well for me. But most importantly, we're gonna talk about the adventurous frame of mind that it takes to get out there and enjoy the process and enjoy making art in the great out of doors. Come join us. We're going to have a blast. We are going to have a blast, July 17th and 18th. So this is a special workshop because it's two full days of workshopping. You know, for those of you who said, you know, ah, I wish it would never end, this one is going to take you deeper. So it's going to be two two-hour sessions on Saturday and on Sunday. And so, so we'll be able to take time really learning, really getting deep. And as you can see, it's on location in Colorado. It's in this beautiful horse farm. And David, who is an incredible teacher, you've probably, you may have taken watercolor magic with him. You may have experienced his uh, incredible depth of knowledge about um, drawing, watercoloring, brushes, the whole world of art supplies. He is our guide in various Q&R lives we do. So David's uh, going to be leading this, and I think it's going to be fantastic. So if you want to get into watercolor and you want to learn about plein air, which is a whole thing, plein air meaning painting outside, um, it's going to be really fun, and it's going to get you ready for getting out there, ripping off your mask, throwing it over your shoulder, rushing into the field, carrying your box of paints, and making beautiful art. So that will be really fun. Okay, so that is what I wanted to talk about. That's the that's my announcement for today. Plein air watercolor. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about tr about what I'm gonna do for this trip. So traditionally, when I go on a trip, um, over time I've learned what to take with me because. There are certain things you want to have when you travel, and but you also don't want to take much stuff. I'm a light traveler. I like to take one bag. I like to have it as a carry-on. I'm going to New York for eight days. I'm staying with my friend Tommy Kane and his wife Yoon Lee, and so I'm not going to be showing up with steamer trunks, taking filling up their house with stuff. I got to be trim. It's also summer, so you don't need like big sweaters and overcoats. So I can, you know, just take the bare minimum and leave some room for, for art supplies. I remember we went on a trip a couple years ago. Uh, JJ and I drove from uh, Seattle to Los Angeles over the course of however long it was, a week or two. And I was really into watercoloring at that point. And I was, we were doing the watercolor rules class and I was packing in um, every conceivable watercolor implement and variation there was. I had just huge bags. I think I had like a giant massive bag because I knew we'd be in a car. So my logic to her was, look, we're, uh, we don't need to take many clothes. We're just, just I'm going to have a giant duffel bag full of art supplies and that'll be my stuff. Little did I realize that the weather was going to be very unpredictable in Northern California and it was freezing so we ended up having to like stop at thrift stores to actually buy me clothes because I really kind of didn't have anything. I just had watercolors and they don't keep you that warm in the cold California summer. So anyway, so I'm trying to s slim it down and trying to just take less stuff. Um, one of the things I'm taking is, well, so this is a Hanumula Travel Journal. As you know, Hanumula is our sponsor. And um, they make this travel journal. It says here, in the style of the legendary sketchbooks used by famous artists and adventurers, this journal is an indispensable companion for attaining notes, thoughts, stories, impressions, sketches, and anything unusual that comes your way. It's nice paper. It's 140 grams. But here's the thing that struck me. This is a, this is a thick sketch travel journal. And I'm only traveling for a week. There's no way that I need all this. So... 
they also make these. These are little little sketch notes. And I I thought I was going to use this travel journal today, but but I'm they make a travel journal that is like this size. I don't have it. I don't have this right now. I have this sketch and note. It's very similar to the travel journal. It's a slightly lighter paper. Um, but what I like about it is it is, you know, it's this thin. So it's kind of perfect for this long of a trip, you know, because, um, you know, it, it, again, it's all in the interest of traveling light. But also I like, I like sometimes to, sometimes I'll have a quote unquote travel journal that I'll use to cover multiple trips all in one. But it's kind of nice to have one journal for one trip and just say like, this is my, this was my New York trip in the summer of 2021. And I just have it all in this one. So that's why I'm probably going to end up taking this little one. Um, it comes in lots of different colored covers. But uh, I think the tr actually official travel journal is sort of this color. And it has a little pocket in the back. But I don't have one of those yet. Maybe the Joe will send me one. But um, this, this sketch and note, it comes in like a package of two. And it's small. Jack actually stole the other one when he came to visit me. But um, so one of the first things I'm doing is, oh, it also has this little sticker that you can paste on the front, but let's see, I might make my own sticker. So first of all, I'm taking each of these are the pens. Let me switch to another point of view here. These are, this is what I'm planning to take. So it's not a huge amount. It's not a duffel bag. In fact, it's all going to go in here in my little slim, somewhat dirty um, zipper bag. So what I'm taking is, let's just see. So I'm taking these Winsor Newton fine liners because I really like drawing with them these days. And I'm taking a few different ones. So, so I have two different sizes, a three and an eight. And I also am taking a blue one, a brown one, and a gray one. Okay. And then I'm going to take uh, my Lamy Safari fountain pen. This is not waterproof ink. All these are. These are permanent. Um, I'm going to take my Pentel brush pen. And then I'm going to take some of these Winsor Newton watercolor markers. I might, I'm, I'm going to also probably, I might take this, which is my field kit, watercolor kit. Um, but I don't know if I'll use it. This is not watercolor paper. But the nice thing about these markers is, see, I tested here, and you can see they don't show through like a regular marker would. But what's also nice about them for traveling, I find, is that they dry almost instantly. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, watercolor stuff. You've got, you've got the full, you know, you've got all your colors, but, you know, you don't have to wait for stuff to dry, which is not always convenient when you're traveling, when you've got to move on. All right, let's go. So... All right. So that is my plan. That's it. So hopefully this whole thing goes in here. Does it? Does it all go in here? Yes. It all goes in here. Zip. Done. And maybe this. So that's it. So now I can afford to take... What am I going to take with me? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to take. I know I'm taking this. We'll see what else I take. All right, um, so all right, so there's a lot of there's a lot of gossiping going on about my trip. I'm seeing. Yes, I am shooting an all star, and I am shooting a new person. It's a shooting star and an all star that I'm shooting. August Wren, yes, I'm doing a new workshop with August Wren. But yes, that'll be nice. Urban sketching workshop, yes. There's all kinds of stuff, but you know. It would ruin it for you if I told you about it, you know, and who knows? I could go there. It could be a complete disaster. And I say, you know what? Actually, I wasn't filming workshops there at all. I was just chilling with Tommy Kane. Tommy Kane is not doing a workshop. Nope. You'll, if you want Tommy Kane, go to Instagram and follow him there. Okay, so we're ready. We're ready to start actually drawing. And um, moving on to here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm doing like little little drawings of just stuff I want to see when I'm there. And I'll tell you a bit about what it is I want to see and why I want to see it. So um, it's 
unzip. Unzip my bag, that is. And yeah, so I'm just going to be drawing quickly. So you're welcome to draw with me if you want, or if you want to draw your own stuff, or if you want to draw your own fantasy vacation. But uh, this is what I'm going to be doing. Just I want to just draw little kind of reminders almost to myself of, you know, this is what I'm going to be, what I want to see. And this is the, the Metropolitan Museum. I haven't been to a museum. Well, I went to one very briefly in, here in Phoenix, but generally I haven't been to any in a really long time. And I want to go and see the Alice Neal show, which is at the Met. So that is what my, so this is just my kind of reminder to myself that I'm going to the Met for sure. For sure, for sure. So yeah, if you don't know Alice Neal, you should. She's amazing. And she's always been one of my faves. So I'm, I've, I've certainly seen some of her paintings in isolation, but the idea of seeing a whole bunch of them all together seems really exciting and uh, definitely a must. So yeah, so I'm trying to draw quickly. That's, I'm not trying to do a big elaborate thing. I'm just trying to say, hey, I'm going to the Met for sure. And you know, what else do I want to do? I'm in, so I'm in New York basically for eight days, seven, days, seven or eight days. I have to visit family. Um, I have to do these two shoots. So I don't have an enormous amount of time, um, but I definitely want to make time for some art. So, but it's nice to, you know, to, before you go on a trip, it's nice to sort of just get a kind of a sense of some of the things that you might encounter, you know, maybe do a little practice drawing, like what is this going to be like um, if I actually go to, you know, let's say going to Paris and I'm going to check out how to draw the Eiffel Tower, let's say, you know, you might want to do this sort of a thing beforehand and just say to yourself, I need to kind of get a grip on it because that way when I get there I can be efficient and also you kind of get to start enjoying the trip before you've even gone because you know it's uh you know sort of a like vic living vicariously through google search you know, so you know now that i think about it i don't know that i've ever drawn the met before Drawn the New York Public Library, which I think it has the same architect. Is it Stanford White? It might be. But it's nice to draw something nice and complicated. I went out to try and do some urban sketching um, here in Phoenix a couple weekends ago. It was kind of hard, honestly. The I'm used to New York architecture, which is, you know full of fanciness and um, full of ornamentation and a lot of the Phoenix architecture was really low and flat because that's how things are here. There aren't a lot of multi-story buildings here in Phoenix because it's hard to air condition them. So yeah. So I'm just going to write a reminder to myself. There we go. That's something. So that's that's a thing I plan to do. And there it is. It's logged. And then I can, you know, I'm not sure that I'm going to actually draw the Met when I'm there. I don't think I want to spend time sitting outside drawing when I could be inside the museum, you know, but who knows. Now I have it, now I've drawn it, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And uh, there you go. All right. Um,
Janice is asking, will David Pyle be approaching this workshop from a sketchbook point of view with minimal supplies or he's thinking big work, big plein air? He's thinking big work, big plein air. It's a two-day workshop on one painting. It's not a sketchbook thing. It's going to be, you're going to paint a gorgeous, full-up watercolor. So yes, it's going to be nice. It's going to be, you're going to learn an enormous amount. Um, all right. What else do I want to draw? Yes, that's right, a bodega. So do you know what a bodega is? A bodega is a, it's kind of a, a New York thing. Certainly I haven't seen the equivalent here in uh, Phoenix, which is, it's a grocery store. But, you know, in New York, I don't know if it's because we don't have cars. We don't do all of our shopping in big supermarkets. We have these little tiny grocery stores. And, uh, you know, they're, they have whatever you need in there. Anything from, you know, stuff to get rid of a hangover, uh, fried egg sandwich, carton of milk, you know, that's, the, they're not where you do the big, the big shop necessarily, but again, in New York, we tend to, you know, we have small apartments and I'm saying we, as if I still live there, I don't live there anymore, but from what I remember from the before times, you know, it was just, uh, you, you just drop in and, uh, pick up what you need for that day. Here in Phoenix, people go to like the 7-Eleven if they want that, which to me is not the same. But the bodega that was near our house in Greenwich Village, when we went back in September on a brief visit to New York, it had gone out of business. It had been there for I don't know. I, I lived there for 25 years. It had always been there, but now it's gone, which was sad. I hope that the bodega survive, but a bodega is definitely something I would like to visit just, just for the sake of the memory of it all. What else? Um, the subway, of course, the subway. I never went on the subway last time we were in New York. It just seemed, it seemed a little scary, honestly. It seemed being in COVID on the subway. Eesh. I don't know. But we hear from friends in New York that it still kind of feels a little, a little scary there. That the subway is still... Um, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of hostility that seems to be kind of popping up in New York right now. We've heard some stories about stuff. But it sounds like New York when I was a kid. You know, in the seventies, eighties. New York was a bit more of a wild west sort of place. It sounds like it's a bit more like that these days. We'll see. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a certain degree of apprehension about this whole thing. Feeling a little apprehensive about traveling. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I think it's partly because I've been living a certain way for so long. I've grown used to it and I've become 
kind of anxious about, you know, change. But that's silly. Change happens. I should be used to it by now. But there you go. What else? All right, well, you guys seem to be talking about all kinds of stuff, so I will not worry about what you're saying, and I will continue with my drawings. Just, again, little fast sketches. Yes, that's a must. A slice of New York pizza. They have pizza out here, don't get me wrong. They have pizza here in Phoenix, or what they call pizza. And I'm sure it's very good. It is. I've eaten it. But. But. I miss being able to just hop in and grab a slice. You know. And that, that is something you've, you don't find in most places. You know. I remember that from Los Angeles too. Sure you can go and buy a pizza. But that's not the same as getting a slice to go, just grabbing it, walking down the street, eating a slice. Again, it's a pedestrian culture. It's really different from when you live in, when you live in cars, because nobody's going to go and get a slice of pizza and then drive a car eating pizza. Right? Unlikely. But when you're perambulating, You can also shove a slice in your pie hole while you're on the, on the road. So, yes, yeah, so I need some za. Yes, that's definitely a thing that will be on my list. And maybe a hot dog cart. Hot, I mean, I can't say, what do they call these dirty dogs? Or uh, these, these are like hot dogs kind of floating in water. I'm here now used to grilling hot dogs on my barbecue in the backyard. It's a whole other level of uh, culinary delight. But, you know, sometimes you go and have a hot dog or one of those pretzel things. You know, it's I can't say this is a, the height of dining, but, you know, it's part of New York that I miss, that I haven't seen in so long, and that there is no... I mean, they have food trucks here now, kind of emerging here in Phoenix, but it's funny when you go and live in a new place, how it's these little things that are different. And when you're a traveler, you start to, you see all these things and you go, that's, that's just a variation on how I live. That's like, we don't have the equivalent of that. You go to Paris, you won't find a sabrette stand, you know, but then like, oh, for instance, the way that you eat breakfast when you're in Rome, standing at a bar, it's called a bar, but it's not really a bar, you know, having a, having a, a latte, because you only have a cappuccino or a latte for breakfast. You don't order them in the middle of the day, I discovered, then you look like a real Philistine if you do that, but, um, or, an, or an American. But certainly, oops, certainly, um, there are all these little habits that you pick up when you're abroad. You go, that's really nice. I wish we had the equivalent of that. Going to Starbucks, not the same. Although I imagine it was inspired by that, right? It was probably inspired by Italian coffee doodads. Yeah. Again, I'm just finding in, in Phoenix, there's some signage that's sort of interesting. I, have, I just haven't gotten in the groove yet of how you draw this place and how you make it seem Phoenician and not generic. But I'll figure it out eventually. 
All right, so there's a little um, hot dog cart. And uh, let's just do one more. I got room for one more little thing in here. Okay, this. This is part of New York that I've probably drawn more than just about any other part, any other piece of architecture in New York. Washington Square Arch. Some of you have been with me and drawn this together. We used to have some sketchbook school events in Washington Square Park. Um, we've shot class videos here. It was really my backyard. It's, uh, in fact, we scattered my dog's ashes, Tim and Joe, their ashes are in Washington Square Park. So yeah, so this means quite a lot to me. And uh, I hope to go back to my neighborhood just to spend a little bit of time there, just to see how things are going, see my the building that we lived in for 25 years, see how it's going. What's going on in New York? This is from the Fifth Avenue side. I, I would often draw it from the other side, although this is a really nice side. It has the two statues of George W. here. The original George W. Washington, that is. And uh, you're looking into the park. Slightly different point of view. But yeah, it's, you know, it's another thing that, about doing this kind of little preparatory stuff is it just kind of gets you thinking about how do I capture the essentials? You know, because you're not, when you're doing travel journaling, you're not necessarily trying to make amazing drawings. That's less the point. The point is more, I'm trying to just capture my experience in a drawing and then like making some notes, you know? So, so you, you don't have to worry so much about, is it perfect? Did I capture everything? No, it's just like, there's the arch, you know? So there's my kind of wish list. Let's say my wish list of stuff I want to do when I'm in New York, and um, you know that should be. I hope I do more drawings than this. I will. I'll definitely be doing more drawings. I'm also going to be hanging out with my friend who is, you know, draws like a fiend. So I'm sure I'll be drawing more. But it's nice to just get ready. Get ready. It's like doing a, a, a dry run, a run through beforehand. You know, and you can also say to yourself, what are the essential things I want to capture in terms of landmarks? You know, like if I was going to New York as a tourist, I would want to like go to Times Square. How do you draw Times Square? You know, it's not a bad idea to sort of prepare yourself for that because you never know what it's going to be like drawing Times Square, it's, it can be overwhelming, you know. So if you look at a few photographs of it beforehand, you can say, okay, how, how have photographers captured this? And might be this be how I want to do it? Or you can say, you know what, I'm just going to immerse myself in Times Square. I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to deal with it, whatever comes up, you know. So they're just sort of different approaches that you might have to capturing it visually and uh, doing a bit of a dry, excuse me, dry run isn't a bad idea. So, all right. Just looking at your comments and seeing if there's anything that I can explain. Um, Limelight is opening again? Seriously? So there was a nightclub that was in a church on 6th Avenue called Limelight that was one of the places I hung out when I was a kid. But then it became like a gym and then it became like a clothing place. So I imagine that it's just going to become that again. Is it really, is it really Lisa, going to become a... Uh, nightclub again maybe it's time to go clubbing all right that could affect my packing i might have to pack some of my wild outfits <clears throat> yeah jean christophe is a lego building yes okay yeah well you know i'm sure you practice with the arc de triomphe it's very similar and it's right by your house so uh, i'm sure that it's going to be Rumor has it, okay. So, Corinne says, I like drawing the things that are not usually subject for postcards. Of course. However, it depends what you're, what you're doing. Because travel journaling isn't about drawing necessarily. It's not about I, what do I want to draw. 
although that could be part of it. It's also about how do I capture my experience? And so the things that are in postcards, those are things that you're you may visit if it's the first time that you go there. You might say, you know what, I'm going to Paris. I got to go and see the Eiffel Tower. When you get to the Eiffel Tower, though, you might choose to draw it very differently from a postcard. You know, uh, I remember going and drawing it and focusing on the pigeons in the park next to the Eiffel Tower and drawing the Eiffel Tower, the little tiny thing in the distance. So there's all different kinds of ways of going. Another thing you will experience when you're traveling is the small things, you know, like pizza or, or a hot dog cart, um, garbage cans. New York has lots of garbage cans. Phoenix has none. There's like, you can't throw anything away here. But in New York, they're all over the place. And the wire garbage cans in parks, I used to draw those quite a lot. You know, other cities have like really elaborate garbage cans. You might want to focus on those. I remember drawing newsstands in Rome. The newsstands were beautiful there. Um, so you notice the things that are different that you don't, you know, that you don't see at home and how they're different. So that's part of the travel experience too, right? Is to say, um, what did I feel? What did I experience? What did I eat? What do people look like? How do people move? You know, all those kinds of things, they all are different when you're traveling. So, you know, that's a good way. Pete Scully draws fire hydrants. I've drawn gazillions of fire hydrants. There's so, many, there's so many variations in New York, but then also when you go to other places, you say, wow, their fire hydrants are completely different. Um, so, yeah. How do, you, how do you deal with sketchbooking when you're with people that don't draw? Well, there's a lot of different strategies. It depends what you mean by people that don't draw. Um, you know, generally... As you see, I try to draw quickly. I mean, I knocked out half a dozen drawings in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So I try to draw quickly. Um, I, and I say to people, hey, I'm going to sit here and draw. Can we meet up in that cafe in 15 minutes? And they go off and they look in shop windows or, you know, those kinds of things. You know, just say, I'm going to do this. You go do that. We'll come back together again. Uh, it doesn't, again, it's not, my perspective on it is it's not a big elaborate thing. Now, I might take these little drawings that I did, if I did a quick drawing like this. When I go back to the hotel, and I'm jet lagged and I can't sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning, I might pull out my watercolors and I might add some stuff. I might take a couple of pictures with my phone to remind me of like, what are the colors of that bodega stand? Oh yeah, they're yellow and red and here's, you know, so I'm not drawing from the photograph, but I'm just using it as reference. So there's lots of different strategies, you know, but partly it's also when you're traveling with your friends and you say like, this is what I do. You know, I'm on vacation, I enjoy doing this, so you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, impose on you, but this is part of my plan, is to draw when I'm in Paris. So if you want to shop while you're in Paris, do that. You know, so that, that's part of what it is. It's just about coming up with some kind of a strategy. You, know, you might even talk about it before you go. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Janice says texting your location makes that easy. It's true. That I'm not used to, actually, but saying like, all right, I'm done drawing. Where are you? I'll come and meet you. You know, it's fun. So, all right. Have I ever been to the New York Zoo? Yes, well, the New York Zoo is actually, there's several. There's the Central Park Zoo, which I used to work in. So yes, I've been there. And of course, the, the Bronx Zoo, which is a gigantic zoo, which I probably won't go to because I really have gone to the Bronx. But uh, it's beautiful, big, beautiful zoo. So yes, all right, so cool. So let me just go through a last couple things I want to do. So I have a new thing that I want to do in Draw With Me, which is I want to share a sketchbook tour with you in each, hopefully each time we meet. I wanted to show you a bit of inspiration. It could be one of my sketchbooks, which is going to be today. It could be one of my friend's sketchbooks. It could be a famous person's sketchbook. But each time I want to leave you with just a brief kind of burst of inspiration, a little break. And um, the folks at Windsor Newton are sponsoring this because they love sketchbooks. and. Um, of all the things that we use to, to make them. So let me just take you through today's tour and uh, hopefully this will be a little burst of inspiration for you.
There you go. That's one, one down, bunch to go. So um, just a few final reminders. So one of which is if you drew your travel journal, fake or preparatory or whatever it is you drew and you want to share it, please do tag it with SBS Draw With Me, hashtag SBS Draw With Me, put it on Facebook, Instagram, or in the schoolyard, and we will add it to the opening uh, salvo for next time we meet. Um, if you've enjoyed any of my uh, essays, vi visual essays, I write one every week, the old-fashioned way with keys and a screen and uh, the like. Anyway, so every week I send out an, an essay like that. It's free. You can sign up for it at dannysessays.com. And uh, yeah, there you go. I'll send it to you tomorrow, every Friday. Bye. Um, okay, plein air watercolor. I just wanted to remind you that that you can sign up for at sketchbookschool.com slash workshops. If you're in Spark, of course, you will be joining us for free. This, is, uh, this workshop is, I think, a real, will really transform how you, how you work. And I certainly insist that everybody who's in Spark must go to this. It will be, it will make a big difference to your life. Um, what else? Oh, yes. No draw with me next week. I'll be in New York. I'm actually shooting on Thursday. Unfortunately, then I will not be able to be here with you. I thought about trying to do it there. Honestly, it would be a mad dash. We'll just skip a week. You can draw without me, and uh, that will be fun. Uh, what else? I also wanted to say... Um, thank you to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor Newton. I was also thinking about um, the fact that both Hanamula and Windsor Newton have these animals as their mascots. Hanamula has the hen, the rooster, excuse me, rooster. Uh, Hana meaning rooster, Mula meaning mill. So they have a rooster. And then Windsor Newton has the flying lion. How badass is that? Flying Lion. So I thought, you know what? Maybe we need to have our own animal mascot for Sketchbook School. Why don't we have a cool little, like, animal logo? So we started working on it. Here's a rough idea of what, what I'm thinking. What do you think? It's not a rooster, and it's not... A flying lion. It's it's Twiglet. Twiglet. So yeah. So I think that that's that's something that uh, would certainly look good on a T-shirt, or on a coffee mug, or on a bag of treats. <laughs> so yes. So this is the future of. Uh, of sketchbook school inspired by Hanamula and Windsor Newton. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining with me today. Um, and uh, I will see you in two weeks. If if you're in Spark, of course, I'll see you a little bit later at, uh, in what 41 minutes and we'll hang out. I've got some cool stuff to show you. And um, otherwise, thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing your travel journals and uh, have a great weekend and week to come. Bye-bye.